Dependent or physician initiated intervention are based on the physician's response to a medical diagnosis. The nurse intervenes by carrying out physician's written orders but requires nursing judgment or decision making. For example, the nurse administers antibiotics to the client with infection. Interdependent or collaborative interventions are therapies that require the knowledge, skill, and expertise of multiple healthcare professionals. For example, the nurse assists the client in walking using crutches after conferring with the physical therapies. Nursing care delivery models, total patient care, a care delivery model where the registered nurse, RN, is responsible for all aspects of one or more client's care. The nurse works directly with the client, family, physician, and health team members. This model has a shift-based focus. The same nurse doesn't necessarily care for the same client over time. For continuity of care, the staff needs to communicate clearly the clients needs to one another from shift to shift. Functional nursing. This care delivery model involves the division of tasks with one nurse assuming responsibility for certain tasks, for example, administration of medications, while another nurse assumes responsibility for other, for example, hygiene, nursing therapies. Nurses tend to become highly competent with the tasks that are repeatedly assigned to them. However, functional nursing ID task focused, not client focused. There is absence of holistic view of clients and there is great probability that care becomes mechanical. Communication is not always clear since no one nurse is responsible for the overall care of the client. Team nursing this model involves the delivery of nursing care by staff of various educational preparations. An RN leads the team composed of other RNs and assistive personnel, for example, nurse assistants, health aides. The team members provide direct client care to group of clients under the direction and coordination of the RN team leader. This model emphasizes collaboration that encourages each member of the team to help others. In this model, RN and assistive personnel are often given client assignment rather than nursing tasks. The team leader coordinates care of the team by communicating with the physicians and other healthcare personnel and resolving the problems met by team members. The team leader is responsible for coordinating each client's nursing care plan. Limitations of this model include Risk if assistive personnel are not prepared to perform all care required by a client. Problems may develop if the role of the RN versus that of assistive personnel has not been clearly defined. Lack of time the team leader can spread with the clients. There may be no attempt to assign the same nurse to the same client each day, causing lack of continuity of care. Primary nursing. This model was developed with the aim of placing RNs at the bedside and improving the professional relationship between staff, and RN assumes responsibility for a caseload of client over time. The RN selects the clients for his slash her caseload and care for the same clients during their hospitalization or stay in a healthcare setting. Primary nursing is a care delivery model designed to maintain continuity of care across shifts, days or visits. Case management. It is care delivery approach that coordinates and links healthcare services to clients and their families. This involves a professional nurse assuming responsibility for client care from admission through and following discharge. Clinicians either as individuals or as part of collaborative group oversee the management of case type based care, for example, clients with specific diagnosis. Nursing theories and conceptual framework, Florence Nightingale, mid-1800. Developed and described the first theory of nursing, notes on nursing, what it is, what it is not. She focused on changing and manipulating the environment 
in order to put the patient in the best possible conditions for nature to act. She believed that in the nurturing environment, the body could repair itself. Klein's environment is manipulated to include appropriate noise, nutrition, hygiene, light, comfort, socialization, and hope. Virginia Henderson, 1955, introduced the nature of nursing model. She identified 14 basic needs. She postulated that the unique function of the nurse is to assist the clients, sick or well, in the performance of those activities contributing health or its recovery that clients would perform unaided if they had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge. She further believed that nursing involves assisting the client in gaining independence as rapidly as possible or assisting him achieve peaceful death if recovery is no longer possible. Faya Abdullah, 1960, introduced patient, centered approaches to nursing model. She identified 21 nursing problems. She defined nursing as service to individuals and families, therefore to society. Furthermore, she conceptualized nursing as an art and a science that molds the attitudes, intellectual competencies, and technical skills of the individual nurse into the desire and ability to help people, sick or well, and cope with their health needs. Dorothy E. Johnson, 1960-1980, conceptualized the behavior system model. According to Johnson, each person as a behavioral system is composed of seven subsystems, namely ingestive, taking in nourishment in socially and culturally acceptable ways, eliminative, reading the body of waste in socially and culturally acceptable ways, affiliative, security-seeking behavior, aggressive, self-protective behavior, dependence, nurturance-seeking behavior, Achievement, master of oneself and one's environment according to internalized standards of excellence. Sexual and role identity behavior. Imogen King, 1971-1981, postulated the goal attainment theory. She described nursing as a helping profession that assists individual and group in society to attain, maintain and restore health. If this is not possible, nurses help individuals to die with dignity. In addition, King viewed nursing as an interaction process between client and nurse whereby during perceiving, setting goals and acting to them, transactions occur and goals are achieved. Madeleine Leininger, 1978-1984, developed the transcultural nursing model. She advocated that nursing is a humanistic and scientific mode of helping a client through specific cultural caring processes, cultural values, beliefs and practices to improve or maintain a health condition. Myra Lewin, 1973, described the four conservation principles. She advocated that nursing is a human interaction and proposed four conservation principles of nursing which are concerned with the unity and integrity of the individual. The four conservation principles are as follows. Conservation of energy. The human body functions by utilizing energy. The human body needs energy producing input, food, oxygen, fluids, to allow energy utilizing as output. Conservation of structural integrity. The human body has physical boundaries, skin and mucous membranes that must be maintained to facilitate health and prevent harmful agents from entering the body. Conservation of personal integrity. The nursing interventions are based on the conservation of the individual client's personality. Every individual has a sense of identity, self-worth and self-esteem which must be preserved and enhanced by nurses. Conservation of social integrity. The social integrity of the client reflects the family and the community in which the client functions. Healthcare institutions may separate individuals from their family. Betty Newman, 1982-1992, 
proposed the healthcare system model. She asserted that nursing is a unique profession in that it is concerned with all the variables affecting an individual's response to stresses which are intra within the individual, inner between one or more other people, and extra personal outside the individual in nature. The concern of nursing is to prevent stress invasion, to protect the client's basic structure and to obtain or maintain a maximum level of wellness. The nurse helps the client through primary, secondary and tertiary prevention modes to adjust to environmental stressors and maintain client stability. Dorothy Oram, 1970-1985, developed the self-care and self-care deficit theory. She defines self-care as the practice of activities that individuals initiate and perform on their own behalf in maintaining life, health, and well-being. She conceptualized three nursing systems as follows. Wholly compensatory, when the nurse is expected to accomplish all the patient's therapeutic self-care or to compensate for the patient's inability to engage in self-care or when the patient needs continuous guidance in self-care. Partially compensatory, when both nurse and patient engage in meeting self-care needs. Supportive educative, the system that requires assistance in decision-making, behavior control, and acquisition of knowledge and skills. Hildegard Pöplu, 1952, introduced the interpersonal model. She defined nursing as an interpersonal process of therapeutic interactions between an individual who is sick or in need of health services and a nurse especially educated to recognize and respond to the need for help. She identified four phases of the nurse-client relationship, namely orientation. The nurse and the client initially do not know each other's goals, and testing the role each will assume. The client attempts to identify difficulties and the amount of nursing help that is needed. Identification the client responds to the professionals or the significant others who can meet the identified needs. Both the client and the nurse plan together an appropriate program to foster health. Exploitation. The client utilizes all available resources to move toward a goal of maximum health or functionality. Resolution. Refers to the termination phase of the nurse-client relationship. It occurs when the client's needs are met and he is like she can move toward a new goal. Peplu further assumed that nurse-client relationship porters growth in both the client and the nurse. Martha Rogers, 1970, conceptualized the science of unitary human being. To Rogers, unitary man is an energy field in constant interaction with the environment. She asserted that human beings are more than and different from the sum of their part. The distinctive properties of the whole are significantly different from those of its parts. Furthermore, she believed that human being is characterized by the capacity for abstraction and imagery, language and thought, sensation and emotion. Sister Callista Roy, 1979-1984 presented the adaptation model. She viewed each person as a unified biopsychosocial system in constant interaction with a changing environment. She contended that the person as an adaptive system functions as a whole through interdependence of its parts. The system consists of input, control processes, output and feedback. In addition, she advocated that all people have certain needs which they endeavor to meet in order to maintain integrity. These needs are divided into four different models, the psychological, self-concept, role function, and interdependence. Accordingly, Roy believed that adaptive human behavior is directed as an attempt to maintain homeostasis or integrity of the individual by conserving energy and promoting the survival, growth, reproduction, and master of human system. Lydia Hall, 1962, introduced the model on nursing, what is it? 
focusing on the notion that centers around three components of care, core and cure. Care represents nurturance and is exclusive to nursing. Core involves the therapeutic use of self and emphasizes the use of reflection. Cure focuses on nursing related to physician's orders. Core and cure are shared with the other healthcare providers. Ida Jean Orlando, 1961, conceptualized the dynamic nurse-patient relationship model. She believed that the nurse helps patients meet a perceived need that the patients cannot meet for themselves. Orlando observed that the nurse provides direct assistance to meet an immediate need for help in order to avoid or to alleviate distress or helplessness. She emphasized the importance of validating the need and evaluating care based on observable outcomes. She also indicated that nursing actions can be automatic, those resulting from validating the need for help, exploring the meaning of the need, and validating effectiveness of the actions taken to meet to need. She also advocated that the three elements composing nursing situation are client behavior, nurse reaction, and nurse action. Ernestine Weidenbach, 1964, developed the clinical nursing, a helping art model. She advocated that the nurse's individual philosophy or central purpose lends to credence to nursing care. She believed that nurse meet the individual's need for help through the identification of the needs, administration of help, and validation that actions were helpful, components of clinical practice, philosophy, purpose, practice, and an art. Jean Watson, 1979-1985 conceptualized the human caring model, nursing human science and human care. She emphasizes the nursing is the application of the art and human science through the transpersonal caring transactions to help persons achieve mind-body-soul harmony, which generates self-knowledge, self-control, self-care, and self-healing. Rosemary Rizzo Pars, 1981 1992. Introduced the theory of human becoming, she emphasized free choice or personal meaning in relating value priorities, co-creating of rhythmical patterns in exchange with the environment, and contrasting in many dimensions as possibilities unfold. She also believed that each choice opens certain opportunities while closing others. Joyce Travelby, 1966 1971. She postulated the interpersonal aspects of nursing model. She advocated that the goal of nursing is to assist individual or family meaning in illness or maintaining maximal degree of health. She further viewed that interpersonal process is a human-to-human -human relationship formed during illness and experience of suffering. She believed that a person is a unique irreplaceable individual who is in a continuous process of becoming, evolving, changing. Josephine Patterson and Loretta Zderat, 1976, provided the humanistic nursing practice theory. This is based on their belief that nursing is an existential experience. Nursing is viewed as a lived dialogue that involves the coming together of the nurse and the person to be nursed. The essential characteristics of nursing is nurturance. Humanistic care cannot take place without the authentic commitment of the nurse to being with and with the doing with client. Helen Erickson, Ellie Tomlin, and Mary Ann Swain, 1983, develop modeling and role modeling theory. The focus of this theory is on the person. The nurse models, assesses, the role models, plans, and intervenes in this interpersonal and interactive theory. They asserted that each individual is unique, has some self-care knowledge, needs simultaneously to be attached to and separate from others, and has adaptive potential. Margaret Newman focused on health as expanding consciousness. She believed that humans are unitary beings in whom disease is a manifestation of the pattern of health. She defined consciousness 
as the information capability of the system which is influenced by time, space and movement and is ever expanding. Change occurs through transformation. Nursing is involved with human beings who have reached choice points and found that their old ways are no longer effective. Caring is moral imperative for nursing. Patricia Banner and Judith Rubel, 1989, proposed the primacy of caring model. They believe that caring is central to the essence of nursing. Caring creates the possibilities for coping and creates possibilities for connecting with and concern for others. Anne Boykin and Savina Achenafer presented the grand theory of nursing as caring. They believe that all persons are caring and nursing is a response to a unique social call. The focus of nursing is on nurturing persons living and growing in caring in a manner that, specific to each nurse, nurse relationship or nursing situation. Each nursing situation is original. Moral theories. Freud, 1961, believed that the mechanism for right and wrong within the individual is the superego or conscience. He hypothesized that a child internalizes and adopts the moral standard and character or character traits of the model parent through the process of identification. The strength of the superego depends on the intensity of the child's feelings of aggression or attachment toward the model parent rather than on the actual standard of the parents. Erickson, 1964. Erickson's theory on the development of the virtues or unifying strengths of the good man suggests that moral development continues throughout life. He believed that if the conflicts of each psychosocial development stages are favorably resolved, then an ego strength or virtue emerges. Kohlberg suggested three levels of moral development. He focuses on the reasons for the making of decision, not on the moral of decision itself. At first level called the premoral or the preconventional level, Children are responsive to cultural rules and labels of good and bad, right and wrong. However, children interpret this in terms of physical consequences of their actions, for example, punishment or reward. Peter, 1981, proposed a concept of rational morality based on principles. Moral development is usually considered to involve three separate components, moral emotion, moral judgment, and moral behavior. In addition, Peter believed that the development of character, traits, or virtues is an essential aspect of moral development. Also, Peter believed that some virtues can be described as habits because they are in some sense automatic and therefore are performed habitually, such as politeness, chastity, tidiness, thrift, and honesty. Schulman and Meckler 1985, believe that moral is measured if how people treat fellow humans and that a moral child is one who strives to be kind and just. They believe that morality has two components, namely, the intention of the person acting must be good in the sense that the goal of the act is the well-being of one or more people. The person acting must be fair or just in the sense that the person considers the rights of others without prejudice or favoritism. Furthermore, the aforementioned author asserted that the theory of moral development is based on three foundations, which they believe can be thought as follows. a. Internalizing parental standards of right and wrong. b. Developing emphatic reactions. c. Acquiring personal standards. Gilligan, 1982 including the concepts of caring and responsibility. She described three stages in the process of developing an ethic of care, which are as follows, caring for oneself, caring for others, caring for self and others. She believed that women see morality in the integrity of relationships and caring. For women, what is right is taking responsibility for others a self-chosen decision, on the other hand, men consider what is right to be what is just. 
Spiritual Theories, Fowler, 1979, described that faith is a way of behaving. He developed a four-stage theory of faith, development based largely on his life experiences and the interpretation of those experiences. These stages are as follows. Experienced faith, infancy to early adolescence, experiences faith through interaction with others who are living a particular faith tradition, affiliative faith, late adolescence, actively participates in activities that doubting on faith, acquires a cognitive as well as affective faith, searching faith, young adulthood, through a process of questioning and doubting on faith, acquires a cognitive as well as affective faith, owned faith, middle adulthood, puts faith into personal and social action and is willing to stand up for what he slash she believes even against the nurturing community. History of nursing in the Philippines, early beliefs and practices, diseases and their causes and treatment were shrouded with mysticism and superstitions, beliefs about causation of disease, another person, an enemy of which, evil spirits, People believed that evil spirits could be driven away by persons with powers to expel demons. People believed in special gods of healing with the priest physician, cult were doctors as intermediary. If they used leaves or roots, they were called herb doctors, herbolarius. Early care of the sick. The early Filipinos subscribed to superstitious beliefs and practices in relation to health and sickness. Herbmen were called herbicheros, meaning one who practiced witchcraft. Persons suffering from diseases without any identified causes were believed to be bitwitched by the Mankukulum or Mangagawai. Difficult childbirth and some diseases called Pamao were attributed to nonos Midwife assisted in childbirth. During labor, the Matubin Gulot, good midwife, was called in. If the birth became difficult, witches were supposed to be the cause. To disperse their influence, gunpowder was exploded from a bamboo cane close to the head of the sufferer. Healthcare during the Spanish regime. The religious orders exerted their efforts to care for the sick by building hospitals in the different parts of the Philippines. The early hospitals established were the following. 1. Hospital Real de Manila 1577 It was established mainly to care for the Spanish king's soldier, but also admitted Spanish civilians founded by Go, Francisco de Sande. 2. San Lazaro Hospital 1586, founded by brother Juan Clemente and was administered for many years by the hospitaliers of San Juan de Dios, built exclusively for patients with leprosy. 3. Hospital de Indio, 1586, established by the Franciscan order, service was in general supported by alms and contribution from charitable persons. 4. Hospital de Aguas Santas, 1590, established in Laguna, near a medical spring, founded by Brother J. Bautista of the Franciscan Order. 5. San Juan Dios Hospital, 1596, founded by the Brotherhood Misericordia and administered by the hospitaliers of San Juan de Dios. Support was derived from alms and rents, rendered general health service to the public. Nursing during the Philippine Revolution, the prominent persons involved in nursing works were Josephine Bracken, wife of Jose Rizal, installed a field hospital in a estate house in Tejeros, provided nursing care to the wounded night and day. Rosa Sevilla Alvero converted their house into quarters for the Filipino soldiers during the Philippine-American War that broke out in 1899. Dona Hilaria de Aguinaldo, wife of Emilio Aguinaldo, organized the Filipino Red Cross under the inspiration of Apollinero Mabini. Dona Maria Agosillo de Aguinaldo, second wife of Emilio Aguinaldo, provided nursing care to Filipino soldiers during the revolution, 
president of the Filipino Red Cross branch in Batanias. Melchora Aquino, Tandang Sora, nursed the wounded Filipino soldiers and gave them shelter and food. Capitan Salom, a revolutionary leader in Nova Ecija, provided nursing care to the wounded when it not in combat. Agueda Cahabagan, revolutionary leader in Laguna, also provided nursing service to her troops. Trinidad Texan, in a Biagnabato, stayed in the hospital at Biagnabato to care for the wounded soldiers.